The Lord gave me a word for us tonight, and I always, he always try to think of a, 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 I put a, I put a title or a handle, whatever you want to say it on sermons, I just do, I just think it's a, I want, I make a direction, because the Lord gives me a direction, and so I put a direction on it, and then I follow it through, I try to, I research, I study, I pray, I listen for his voice, and this is, this is the, one of the title that he gave me tonight, is don't make mountains out of molehills. Don't make mountains out of molehills. <laughs> How about that? I've been in ministry long enough to recognize when the work of the, the enemy is working, and, and I can I can I can see when he rears his little ugly head, and it's popping up around me. And there's two things I've learned in ministry that there's two times when Satan really attacks. There's two times. And one is, is when you've had a great victory. Right after a great victory, there's an attack. And then there's another time, and it's right before a great breakthrough. Those are the two times when he really comes and he attacks. And I don't know about you, but maybe in your personal life, this is, this is for you. Maybe it's for somebody that's watching online tonight. I don't know. I know I, that I'm preaching for myself as well as when I preach, every time I stand up here and preach, I not only preach, I preach to myself as well. But I know that those are the two times that he really attacks us after a great victory and, and right before a major breakthrough. And I believe that our church is standing at perfect timing for both of these. Both of these apply right now. When the youth came back on fire from camp, that was a major breakthrough in a lot of their lives. It really was. That no matter where they go and how long they live, they, w- they will not be able to deny they had an encounter with the Lord. And that's a breakthrough. I, I, a lot of the, uh, uh, the young people came back and announced a call that God had put on their hearts and their lives. And so that's a, that's a breakthrough. But we also stand right at the edge. I mean, that was a great victory. We stand right on the edge of a great breakthrough in our church. And I wrote these down. I thought about this. The Green County Fair that Victor has orchestrated in, in, in our church, and the God has orchestrated. God has orchestrated it. And, and in, we're setting right there and reaching into the community. I think that's going to be a great thing. I just do. I proclaim that in the name of Jesus. You can speak things. I believe that. You can, you can prophesy to them. The water hand, handout that's coming up. It's a, it, these are ways to get into the community. I see this. The horse show outreach um, that, 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 I've, that God has given me a vision for in the last month and a half, it's just really burning in me now. I can see it. I can, God has showed me, you know, you quit apologizing for being a cowboy church. Embrace it and, and watch God send people in. Through, through, you know, it's just an amazing thing. I, I, I'll share with you uh, at some point the vision God has given me for it. I just, I just see it. He showed me very clearly. Um, young people, I mentioned this earlier, young people coming back announcing their call. And God has even spoken to Jennifer and I about some of the young people, their calls that they don't even know they have in their life. But God has affirmed it in us and showed us. And then... I see this last one is God stirring older people to rekindle that call he put on them at a younger age, but it's rekindling that call in them. Amen? I see it. We're on the edge of a great breakthrough. I just feel that. I feel it with everything in me. But as a shepherd of a flock, I'm always constantly looking for the attack of the enemy. And I believe that we have seen this attack lately. Let me show you this attack. It's been through COVID, through offenses, through financial distractions, through illusions of things that problems are bigger than what they are. Am I making sense to anybody? Can anybody testify to this? I know I can. I can see this very easily. It's funny because I'm always listening for the voice of the Lord. And even right before we, we left to go on our trip, we went down and I helped, uh, uh, I had to stay my distance because I had COVID, but Janice asked me to come over and look at prices. 
So I stood on one side of the trailer. She stood on the other, and I said, "We need you need to price this for your yard sale this much," and and kind of helped her with tools. And she, while I was doing that, she said, "You know, the Lord spoke to me, and she he, she told me He told me something. He said it was for me, but I think it's for you too, and it might be for the whole church. And this is what the Lord told her: not to make a big deal out of something that's not there." And I was like, holy cow. And I, at the time, I was like, you know, I was walking around with brain fog from COVID, so I really didn't give much an, uh, a response to it. But as I was studying, the Lord brought that, Holy Spirit brought that back to my remembrance just as clear as ringing a bell. And I knew that this was something. And so another way to interpret it as I was thinking about it is don't make a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> and you say, why, why are you preaching this? Because the enemy would like nothing better than to uh, mess up potential victories. He would like nothing better to disrupt what God wants to do. In John 10.10, 10, almost everybody in here could probably quote it. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And that's not just in heaven, that's here. A rich and satisfying life here. Isn't that wonderful? But the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy your dreams. And how does the enemy accomplish killing, stealing, and destroying all these things? He wants to kill your dreams. He wants to steal your joy and your peace. He wants to destroy, try to disrail the, the, the plans that God has for your life. Everybody in here, God has a plan for your life. He really does. He's got a plan for this church. I want to show you how he does it. I need uh, two volunteers, Justin and Sheree. Yes, that's right. Come on up here. Mm-hmm. I had in my notes I was going to bring James and Jennifer up because they're newlyweds. Yes. But but you guys, you guys just come on over here. Just yeah, you guys are nice. There you go. These are a married couple. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Everybody say, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> They're not newlyweds. But you know what the enemy, you know how he wants to kill, steal, and destroy? You know how he wants to do it? He wants to weasel in here, and he wants to separate. Yeah. He wants to separate them. God's, that's right, God's, God's, God's desire is to bring them together. You understand? God blesses in unity. That's all right. You can stay close. That's all right. He, his, his, his desire is unity. His desire, because the Bible says that the two shall become one. But the enemy, the way he does it, he comes in and he wants to separate. Now, this is in every area, not just marriage, but this can be in your children. I've never seen a time where there's so many Christians that won't talk to their children. Let me be frank with you. You're the Christian. You're the Christian. Be the Christian, even if they're a heathen. You reach across the board, and you God God what you can God could unite God can redeem God can restore. I believe it with everything in me. Do you know marriage is the perfect per picture of the church? Remember Christ, and the church is the bride. What does Satan want to do with the church? It's the same thing. This is how his tactics are. He his tactics are to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his, that's, his, that's his objective. That's what he wants to do, kill, steal, and destroy. But his strategy is to separate. It truly is. Can you see that? Thank you, guys. It's easy to see when you start looking at it. He wants to do it in your marriage. He wants to do it in your children, the church. Look at this country. Look how divided this country is. And when, when things become divided, they become unproductive. 
I, I, I called around today to look for electrical conduit to put electric maybe in the barn just to see if electrical conduit. There are people that cannot get conduit in this country because they say they can't get workers. I ran into another guy at the, at the, at the Lowe's that makes pallets. He says, I said, how's your business doing? Because I knew him from before. He said, I can't get help. You know this is everywhere. Right now, people cannot get help. But I chalk it up to is because it's a country divided. In a country that's divided, anything that's divided is unproductive. You take a marriage that's, that's, that is separate and it's unproductive. But the Bible says that one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. When you put two people together that are productive, they can do something for the Lord. When you put a church that's united in one front, they can do something for the Lord. You put a country that's united under God, one nation under God will be the most productive nation in the world. And we were at one time, but now we can't even get people to work. That's good, isn't it? Turn to somebody and say that. That's exactly what it is. I believe that. So division is Satan's strategy. But you know what his tactics and what he uses is his tactics? Offenses. It's the little offenses. Turn with me if you got your Bible to Matthew 5, 21. We're going somewhere tonight. Trust me, it's good. This is a word from the Lord. Don't make mountains out of molehills. Matthew 5, starting at verse 21. My heading in my Bible said, murder begins in the heart. <laughs> Murder begins in the heart. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I, I believe that, and it begins in the heart. Verse, starting at verse 21, it says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. For whoever says to his brother, Raka, I don't know what Raka means, but that sounds like a swear word, doesn't it? And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of counsel. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Well, that's, that's pretty strong, isn't it? Think about that. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there at the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, then come quickly and offer your gift. Agree. That's what the, the word there, agree, means to come into understanding with. Agree with your adversary quickly. Come into understanding quickly with your adversary while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. As surely I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. Satan wants you miserable, and he wants you unproductive. Division is his strategy, but the tactic is offenses. And Jesus always deals with the heart before he deals with the outward reaction. That's why he said murder begins in the heart. He deals with the, the inward heart, and only Jesus can change a heart. He said he would take a heart of stone and make it into a heart of flesh. That's why Jesus always, when he came and taught, he always taught about issues of the heart, because he can change a heart. And offenses, what I have found out, they start as a small little speck. They do. And you sit around and you collect specks. You don't get rid of them. And you know what Jesus said about the speck, right? <laughs> you collect enough specks and you have a big log in your eye. And people that are offended offend other people. Amen? I found that the big log is made up of a bunch of little specks. You believe that? I just do. I see that. And people are always... Uh, put the log down. Put it down. Don't, don't pick up specks. Don't collect specks. The Bible says in the last days that many will be offended. Jesus said offenses will come. You're going to be offended. 
you might as well get ready for it. Turn to somebody and say, get ready. I don't know if you remember that one sermon I preached where it said we're all shot. Remember that? Shut up, get in the truck and drive. Remember that? We all, we all will suffer offenses. And Jesus said that's a trademark of the last days is that, that many will be offensive, offended. But I've seen this in people that have been married a long time, and you have seen this too. Maybe people that have been married a long time, and then all of a sudden they get a divorce and they end up hating each other. They become enemies. You ever seen that? And they didn't start out that way, did they? They started out seeing the best in everything. They were, they were, you know, they, they, you know, they, they talked on the phone forever, and they, they loved everything about that person. But what happens is you pick up little specks here and there, and you, and you, and eventually you got a big old log. You can't be picking up specks. You just can't. I've seen that in church. People come to church. They've came to this church before and say, this is the best church I've ever been in. I love it. The preaching. Man, you're preaching. I was just, I've never heard anything like it. And then, you know, six months later, they don't ever show back up. And, and it's okay if God calls you to another church. I'm okay with that. This isn't a life sentence. But if you're not in church, period, something's wrong. They've been offended along the way. That's all there is to it. Amen? And little specks of offense, when you carry them, you make, a, you make a mountain out of a molehill. And it's so easy to do. you got to learn to step over them. So I wrote some things down, how to not to make a, a mountain out of a molehill. How many has ever known somebody like that? They've made, you, they had just a little molehill in their life, and the next thing you know, it's a mountain. So here you go. Here's the first thing. If you want to know how not to make a mountain out of a molehill, I got you some object lessons here. I'm supposed to be teaching the youth tonight, so just turn to somebody and say, I'm younger than I look. <laughs> That's right. And they'll, and they'll call you a fibber. No, I'm just picking. The first thing is, if you don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, you need to put the magnifying glass down. Amen? I got a real practical sermon for you. You need to put the magnifying glass down. Trust me, if you get the magnifying glass out and you study my life, you follow me around and you start studying me and you look through this magnifying glass at my life, it's not that I intend to let you down. But you're going to find some wrinkles. You're going to find some dirt. There's going to be something in my life you're not going to agree with. And I guarantee this. If I follow you around with the magnifying glass, I'm going to find something that I'm not going to like. So you know how I'm not going to, you know how I'm not going to make a mountain out of a molehill? I'm going to put the magnifying glass down. Amen? I believe this, and this is, this, is, this is really good. I'm not saying you have to walk around with blinders. The facts are the facts. If you see something, you see an issue and a, a something that needs to be addressed, biblically you can address something. There's nothing wrong with that. But you better not be taking a magnifying glass and looking around on somebody else's life and trying to figure out exactly what's wrong with them. Let the Lord do it. There's one Savior, and His name is Jesus Christ. Boy, it's good preaching. Turn to somebody and say, that's good preaching. Tend your own garden. Amen? Tend your own garden. Stay in your lane. Yeah, you got it. Matthew 7, 2 says this. I always want to give you a scripture to back up my points. It says, for you will be treated, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard you will be judged by. You pick out a magnifying glass and you start, you start picking things apart on somebody, guess what? That's the way it's going to be done for you. I don't want that, do you? Amen. That's the way it is. So if you don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, put the magnifying glass down. Tell somebody that. Put the magnifying glass down. <laughs> Here's the second thing. 
Three easy points tonight. You should remember this. This is going to be easy to remember, but it'll help you. Because I'm telling you, I've seen it in, in marriages. I've seen it with people in ministry. I've seen it in different things. If you hold that magnifying glass long enough, you'll find something wrong. What was it Abraham Lincoln said? If you look for the wrong of the bad in people, you'll find it. You will. You'll find it. It's just the way it works. Here's the second thing. Pick up the mirror. Put down the magnifying glass and pick up the mirror. Huh? Come on. The word, you know, Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus is the word of God. Right? It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh, and it, and it lived, and it dwelt among us. That was Jesus. So Jesus is the word. And when you pick up the Bible, you pick up Jesus. You literally pick up Jesus. And when you pick up Jesus, everybody that came to Jesus, you know what? He never judged anybody. Jesus even said, I didn't come into the world to judge the world, but that the world through me might be saved. That's what he said. Right? Even a woman at the well, he said, I, I, you know, I don't judge you. He said, just go and sin no more. Right? The woman that was caught in adultery, that's what he told her. Don't go and sin, just don't go and sin no more. I don't judge you. We're all, all your accusers. Neither do I. But when you pick up the word of God and you look at it, it's a mirror. And it shows you because you're looking at Jesus. You're looking at who, who is perfect. And that's the standard we need to live our life by. Not by somebody else's life, but by Jesus' life. And when you pick up the mirror, it will show you all your flaws, and it'll, it'll deal with your heart. Amen? I love this. We have access to Jesus through the Word of God. James 1, 23 through 25 says this, For you, if you listen to the Word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself, you walk away and forget to forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you've heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you look in the mirror of the Word of God, you will not make a mountain out of a molehill. Amen? It's so good, isn't it? I love this. If you spend time with the magnifying glass, you'll get bitter. Your life will get bitter. You, 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 you know, at people, at your wife, at those people around you, at your church, you'll get bitter if you hold on to this. But if you get pick up the, the mirror, you'll get better. You'll get better. Amen? <laughs> it's this I, I just believe this in everything in me it's only through Jesus and the Holy Spirit that you can love others the Bible says that that, that through the Holy Spirit God shed his love to us so that we may love others so when you pick up the mirror you will, you will experience God's love and you need to do what it says the last point, if you don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, this is, my, this is one of my favorites. What did I do with it? Use your telescope. <laughs> huh? No, that's right. <laughs> Use your telescope. You know what a telescope's for? It's for bringing objects that are way out there to bring them closer. And when you start focusing your telescope on heaven and the things that are not of this earth, I'm telling you, you start bringing them closer to you, you won't worry about molehills. You won't worry about molehills in your life. Things are going to, I'll tell you, it's so good. that when, when, I, when I put a telescope to my eyes, what I'm doing is what we did, we sang that song Sunday, remember that song Power? It says, I lift my eyes to the mountains from where my help comes from, to the maker of heaven and earth. And I point my telescope and I look at, at, at the Father. And I'll tell you what, if I look at heaven right now and I keep my eyes on heaven through the telescope, it's so close. The coming of the Lord is so close. I don't have time to worry about molehills. 
I don't have time to worry about the things that don't matter in this life. Amen? It's so good. You have to understand this. I think when I think of somebody like that, I think of Stephen in the Bible. Stephen in the Bible was full of the Holy Ghost, right? He never did anything wrong. All he did was preach the gospel. But he was so full of the Holy Ghost that these little these these people came and they started stoning him. They started stoning him. But you know what he did? He didn't look at the molehills. That sounds big. Being stoned to death sounds pretty big, doesn't it? That sounds more than a molehill, but I tell you what, when you walk with the Lord and you're full of the Holy Ghost, it's just a molehill. Because you know what, you know what uh, Stephen did? He, he put his eyes on Jesus. He put his telescope on Jesus. Acts 7.55 says this, But Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God, and he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. He didn't even see the people that were stoning him because he was focusing on heaven. I'm telling you, in your marriage, do this. There are people right now that, that, that maybe they're, they're, they're coming against you, en- your enemies. But you need to focus on heaven. Put your telescope on heaven. Amen? People... I, I, I know this, um, if I get my eyes too much on people around me or, or even uh, if I focus and try to put my, my magnifying glass on Jen, <laughs> we'll end up fighting about something, right? And, and I know she don't even need a magnifying glass to find my faults. But if we, if we look too long at each other at our faults, it will tear us apart. But if we'll focus on what's really important, heaven, amen? And if we'll get in the Word and look and, and let the Holy Spirit speak to us, Christ gave everything to keep the church together. He gave everything. He gave, he gave, his, he gave his, Himself on the cross to keep us together. And what we don't need is a church and your family and people that are loggers, <laughs> right? We don't need a bunch of loggers. Put them down. We need people that are going to focus on heaven. Amen. And Satan would like nothing better for you to be offended. Let him go. Turn to somebody and say, let it go. As soon as offense comes, let it go. If you want to get past being a molehill inspector, point your telescope to heaven. Point it to heaven. Let it go. Amen? It's time for us all, myself included, we got to grow up. I'm a terrible babysitter. I said that Sunday. Remember that? So it's time for us all. we got to grow. Your family needs you to grow. They're waiting on you to grow. And there's so many people that are offended these days. Amen? About anything and everything. Grow up. Growing is a process. You just don't automatically, boom, one day you're, you're grown. You continue to grow. I don't care how, how mature you are in the Lord, how, how deep you are, you can grow. You can still grow. We need to become almost unoffendable. Amen? That's good. Turn to somebody and say, that was a good word. It's a good word. Don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Turn to somebody and say, don't, turn, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. That's right. It's kind of like that, that sermon I preached. Was it uh, Jesus, the Prince of Peace? It'll be all right. It will be all right. Amen. Amen. I want to pray with you. If you, want, if you. if you have anything tonight, you say, well, I've been struggling with this. I've been making some some mountains. And, and, and it may not even be an offense against somebody. It may be something in your life that, that's, that's got you tore up. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's something that, that you've been focusing on too much that's just got you tore up. That's here. Might not even be somebody. But if that's you tonight and you say, I want prayer. I want, I want you to pray with me. Stand with me in prayer. Um, if you want to come, I'll pray with you about it.
I believe God's got the answer for you. Amen? I know He does. I know He does. Is there anybody tonight that would like to pray? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. That's good. That's good. Keep coming. You be. I'm telling you, search your heart. While you sit there, search your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you. Is there something in my life? Is there a situation? Is there somebody? I'm going to ask. I want to pray real quick and ask the Holy Spirit to bring that to your mind right now. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, I'm asking. Lord, if there's a situation in someone's life that just seems like it's too big, nothing's too big with you, Lord, if they'll just get their eyes on you. And so, Lord, as I pray, I ask the Holy Spirit, right? You said you'd bring everything back to remembrance. I pray that you bring that situation right to the front of their mind. Lord, if there's a person that they're, up, they're upset against or they're offended or they're carrying something, Maybe they're carrying a bunch of specks and you want them to lay them down tonight. Lay that log down. I pray that right now in Jesus' name that you would just bring that to their mind. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to keep praying with these guys. If you want to come and want prayer, I'll pray with you.
God's good, isn't he? Amen. I pray that did you take this word with you and and that Holy Spirit will just continue to work it in your life. Amen. It's good. I'm excited. God's God's doing great things. He really is. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a great year. I just believe it. Amen. So good. All right. Well, anybody got a prayer request before we leave? Don't make a mountain out of a molehill, right? That's right. <laughs> Road rage. Okay. Okay. good all the all the the online requests we heard you um justin brought them to the church so we'll we'll be praying for you all pray for gary jr yeah Two stinks. Okay. Okay. Yep. Guidance for the next school year. Anybody else? Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight. Lord, we have many petitions when we come before your throne. And Lord, you said where two or three are gathered and we come before your throne because of what your son Jesus did. He tore the veil from the top to the bottom. And we can come boldly before the throne, respectfully, but boldly before the throne. Lord, you heard every request that was mentioned here, the ones that need a touch physically from you. Lord, you heard their names as they were called out. Lord, I pray right now that you would be with them. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. I know that you can heal. There's nothing that you cannot do. You said, behold, I am the Lord of God of all flesh. Is there anything impossible for me? And there's nothing impossible. So I pray right now for a healing touches for those that, that need healing in their bodies. God, I pray that you would be with all the unspoken requests, Lord. You know the, you know the hearts. You know the desires. You know the things that are people are... are are, are, are having their hearts, and so I pray right now for them. Lord, I pray for the lost. Lord, we, 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 uh, if you're, com you're coming soon, Lord, and I don't want to see anybody have to go through the tribulation. And so, Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd help us reach the lost. All those names that are in the jars, Lord, all the, the friends and loved ones and, and people that need you, that, that, Lord, we don't want them to die and go to hell without you, Lord. I pray that you would you would show us how to reach them through the Holy Spirit. Help us, uh, Holy Spirit, to anoint each and every one of us to do your work. Lord, because it's not by our might, not by our power, but by your Spirit, saith the Lord. 
And so I pray for a move of the Spirit of the Lord in our church and, 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 and revival in each person's heart and each person's soul right now, God. I pray that over them, over their heart, over their minds, over their homes, Lord. I pray that revival would break out in each home, God. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would just be with our country, God. If, if, our, if, if you don't show up in our country, it is lost. And so my, my hope is not in this country, but is in you. But Lord, I, we wanna, we, you said to pray for all leaders everywhere that we might live a peaceful life. And, and so I pray that right now for our leaders, um, that we might share the gospel freely. Because if we don't lift it up, there'll be a day where we won't be able to share freely. So Lord, I pray that you would turn our hearts of our leaders back to you, God. I pray for Israel. I pray for the peace of Israel. And I pray that, that you would just, uh, that your people would come to know who you are, Lord. I pray that for them. I pray a blessing on them, Lord. I pray that you would be with our, our the, the, the emergency workers and the, the military of and, and, and this country. God, we need you. I thank you and praise you. I thank you that we can come here tonight and worship you freely. I thank you for that. I never want to take that for granted, God. And so I pray right now that you would be with each person that's here tonight. Bless them, Lord. The ones that are watching online, bless them, Lord. Stir in our hearts. Give us a hunger and a thirst for you. Be with Victor as he travels. Be, give him safety on his way down there, on the way back. Give him uh, joy and peace in the journey. I pray that. Lord, I pray that you would be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night. If you need anything, give me a call.